What's up, guys? Marlon back at it again here with another edition of the show. Really do appreciate you guys. Thank you all so much for the tremendous support on the channel. And we're going to be starting off today with, obviously, Sony buys a new studio. Starting off the week very, very strong here for you guys. And also, when it comes to PlayStation news, that is. And also, we're going to be talking about... Uh, you know, Sony's boss when it comes to the worldwide studios for PlayStation, you know, literally digging in and talking about single player games. And like I told you guys, moving beyond the actual console is really the main focus here, right? Uh, I think that a lot of people have to understand that, well, Jim Ryan himself, he talks about how the games perform on console and how they want to expand just beyond 20 or 30 million units, you know, being sold on PS5 or on the actual box. And they want their games to reach hundreds and millions of people. And I think that's literally the goal here for PlayStation. And so whenever you see them buying certain studios and making certain moves and things of that nature, Sony is very strategic with how they buy their studios and the things that they really do. They can't just go around buying every single studio. And I completely understand that. But as long as you stay on point, as long as you understand what makes PlayStation PlayStation, then I think we are 100% fine here. And regardless of the greed and the things that they're doing with the PS5 across all regions except for the U.S., and the statements from the Brazilian uh, court document, you know, saying that they can't rival Call of Duty and several years to, you know, compete with Game Pass and all these things, blocking games and all this thing. I feel like with the efforts that they're trying to make execution wise, I think that's very, very important because I've seen a lot of PlayStation fans out on Twitter you know, complain about the leadership of Jim Ryan. And the thing is, is that Jim Ryan is obviously different from Sean Layden. He's different from, you know, everybody else. Andrew House, he's different from Jack Trenton. I mean, he's just a different guy altogether. And I feel like he's more old school and by the book. A lot of PlayStation fans are not happy when it comes down to PlayStation 3 emulation or how they're treating backwards compatibility. We know there's a lot of things behind the scenes that are currently in the works. And so, you know, the mimicking of the cloud and th these backwards compatibility and the quality of the backwards compatibility games, uh, you know, people complain about the $70 price of the games and such. And not only that, right, the efforts of, you know, advertising their first party games like, you know, People are stressing like, man, they don't even advertise as much. And that's stuff that I talk about on the channel. And I'm like, man, you know, Sony just they, they they're going back to that same old mindset of like, we don't we don't really have to do this. You know, we don't really have to do that. That's one of the main reasons why they pulled out of E3. And they're like, you know what, we're just we're just going to stand on our own two feet and do our own thing, which there's nothing wrong with that. Right. Because I know E3 is very expensive. Boots are expensive. All that type of stuff. But Sony just wants to continue to be Sony. And not every single decision that Sony makes, people are going to be happy about it. I'm not going to be happy about it. But at the end of the day, a lot of the decisions that are being made from the higher ups at Sony, they're looking at numbers and they're looking at different things that, well, the consumer is not looking at. But at the same time, like I've said before, I just feel like a lot of things that they're doing is kind of rubbing people the wrong way in terms of like, you know, maybe a studio that they will buy. Like, for instance, a lot of people didn't want them to buy Bungie. And that's completely understandable because they're like, well, how does Bungie kind of fit in with PlayStation? And well, obviously, their their efforts of pushing life service games and well, they have other plans, you know, when it comes to Bungie. And that's completely fine. Right. Bungie remains independent. Bungie can continue to do what they do best, but they're still under the umbrella for PlayStation, and which is that's completely understandable. Um, but it, it's it's very and some of the diehard fans like you hear people talk about these issues, right? Like 
it's just it, it's just being real and being honest and being upfront about things that people are requesting. But at the same time, well, one of the biggest things I hear people are saying now is, well, I want day and date when it comes to the subscription service. Well, not going to happen, right? Obviously, the whole PC situation, a lot of people are not happy about that, right? Well, that's going to continue to happen. But from what I gather from Herman today, from what I understood about what he said was basically like, listen, we're still going to be PlayStation. We're still going to make these single player games. And that's cool. But I think at this point, people want more than just the single player games. They, they really want to sort of expand, right? into multiplayer or they want to expand into different genres of games and not just the single player games like we know that the single player games are delivering and i think that's one of the things that we have to understand that yes single player games are always going to be great but what about the multiplayer we know they're working on the multiplayer stuff we know that they have acquired a bunch of other studios to facilitate that right but on top of the multiplayer stuff well mobile is a big thing for them pc is a big thing for them Live service games is a big thing for Sony. And so, man, Jim Ryan's leadership is definitely different. It, it's just, it just feels like, it just, I don't know. It just feels weird. The, the leadership of Jim Ryan, it feels weird. And I'm not used to that. You know what I mean? And he don't talk as much, right? And I don't agree with every single thing that Jim Ryan does. I, I don't. You know what I mean? I just feel like things could be a lot better if certain people would be in PlayStation or still running PlayStation at this point. But it is what it is. And we just have to let things run its course. I mean, for me, I will definitely take a vote and say, hey, Jim Ryan, you could do this and this and this better or whatever. But not necessarily saying that, well, this is going to happen or this is going to change. But man, times are changing. Microsoft you know, they're, they're more aggressive than ever. Um, Sony is just getting back to the more relaxed type thing. Like, oh, we don't really have to push too much. Oh, we didn't really have to do this or do that because we have the brand loyalty. But today we're going to be talking about this new studio acquisition here. We're also going to talk about Sony and obviously their efforts to go beyond the console. We're also going to talk about a new PS5 model as well for you guys. Uh, this model of the PS5 is a lot lighter. And so we're going to be talking about that, not necessarily a PlayStation 5 Slim. Um, we're also going to be talking about a new Mafia game. Man, literally, I grew up playing Mafia and obviously Mafia 3 was amazing. Uh, the remake, all that good stuff, right? Uh, also, we're going to talk about Discord and PlayStation. We're also going to talk about that rumor about EA uh, being picked up by Amazon. I mean, if that would have happened, oh boy, that would have been crazy. We're also going to talk about The Last of Us Part 1 as well. And to tie everything off, we're going to talk about Sony. Literally just diving into more things that I think PlayStation fans would really want to hear and know. So do me a favor, guys, hit the like button, hit the share button. If you really want this to be the premier place where you get your PlayStation news and your Xbox news. So diving into our first story here, uh, let's go ahead and let's talk about it. I was trying to grab my iPad for you guys. Hopefully you guys are doing well. Shout outs to each and every one of you guys. Thank you guys so much for coming here today. And let's not waste any time. Let's dive right off into it, man. So hopefully you guys are having a great Monday so far. Me, I'm just here for you guys, man. I'm just here to put in the work. So let's go ahead here and let's talk about this new uh, studio. And with this new studio, never really heard of this studio before. But obviously, with all the other studios that Sony has bought within the, the space of like three years or so, it's insane because each studio have their strengths and each studio is going to help Sony achieve 
what they're really setting out for. And I think that's something that's very, very important to note here. So let's talk about this new studio. Let me put a timestamp on this one. Hit the like button for me, guys, and see if we can get 100 likes on the stream. And we're going to be diving into this here shortly. Shout out to everybody. Tag me. I appreciate you guys, man. God of War Ragnarok. I cannot wait for God of War Ragnarok, man. It's going to be it's going to be an amazing game. Definitely is going to be an amazing game. And I think it's going to blow a lot of people away. Um, I know Sony Santa Monica, they're not going to drop the ball on this one. Oh, yes. And we're going to be talking about um, the PS5 Edge controller and what's in the box for the Edge controller. Let me go ahead and put this timestamp on this one again okay so diving into our first story here guys uh sony just came out of nowhere starting off monday strong with a new studio acquisition so let's take it away and here it is all right so they have a new uh studio here now this is for their mobile division i told you sony is uh literally taking their mobile side of things you know a lot more serious, right? Jim Ryan actually talked about it and say, hey, listen, we, we're trying to uh, expand beyond the box. We're trying to expand beyond the PlayStation 5 and get more and more gamers that don't own a PlayStation 5 or, or brand new to the actual ecosystem on the train for PlayStation. And so they're, you know, they, they, they bought all these studios for, for PC and things of that nature. Uh, you know, obviously... Like I said before, uh, now this is the, the mobile side of things and people are saying, well, why are they buying a mobile studio? That's because, well, they're trying to expand in that arena. They're trying to get more and more of their games out to, you know, mobile gamers because that that mobile uh, gamer segment is huge, you know, and so they're trying to tap into that. And so it says, welcome in uh, Savage Game Studios plus expanding our community. And obviously, this is the new studio here that they have acquired, Savage Game Studios. Uh, welcome to the family. So out of nowhere, boom, there you have it. The type up was done by none other than Herman Hulse, head of PlayStation Studios. And there's something that's very, very important here that I really want to touch upon because while they're trying to expand um, PlayStation and expand the games out to mobile and also PC it's very important to know that with this type up, we have learned that Sony is still going to st stick to what makes them great is their single player games. And so let's go ahead and let's read this one here. It says, hello, PlayStation Nation. Today, we announced that we have entered into a definitive agreement to acquire Savage Game Studios, a hugely talented team of creatives uh, with many years of experience making some of the most popular mobile games. So Sony is trying to expand into that arena, guys, uh, enjoyed by players around the world. Now, they were founded a few years ago. So this is like literally a brand new studio, all right? Um, with the goal of fearless exploring and bold new ideas. We share their tireless ambition to innovate along with a continued drive to expand our audience and bring PlayStation to more people than ever before, making them a perfect fit to join PlayStation Studios. So yes, like I said before, Sony is trying to expand. Jim Ryan talked about it. Now we have head of uh, PlayStation Studios here talking about the same thing. And there's nothing wrong with expanding as long as you stay true to the core of what makes PlayStation great is their single player games, right? As long as the games are high quality, you're delivering value, you know, in the multiplayer department, you, you know, they're getting that up and going. They have 10 live service games by now in 2026. Uh, you know, they're, they're really trying to drop more select games on PC to strengthen that. Uh, they have a PC launcher thing that apparently they're working on. Uh, you know, they're trying to really sh expand the PlayStation ecosystem even further here. And so let's go ahead and let's see here. Now, obviously, they turn it over to the CEO and founder of Savage Game Studios for proper introductions and everything like that. Now, obviously, uh, thanks, Herman, and hello in PlayStation, uh, the community and everything established in 2020, led by myself and fellow co-founders, uh, Najim Ajir and Michael McManus. Uh, basically, Savage Game Studios was born 
of our many years of mobile game development experience spanning a number of massively successful global IP. Our guide vision was basically, you know, a creative space where experimentation and taking risks weren't where really uh, avoided. So this is interesting, but rather eagerly embrace. We have all the work at a big studio, like big studios before, right? And we respect advantages of ample resources. We want to stay small and nimble so that we could call our own shots. So that's interesting, right? And basically down at the bottom here, they talking up, they talked about like why, you know, why would they join PlayStation or whatever the case may be. So quote, so when then uh, you may be thinking to yourself, would you join PlayStation Studios? We made this deal because we believe that PlayStation Studios leadership respects our vision for how we can operate and succeed. And because they too are not afraid to take chances, all of that plus the ability to potentially tap into Play PlayStation's amazing catalog of IP and the fact that we will benefit from the kind of support that only they can provide. Harder question to answer would be why not right and so obviously we know playstation when it comes to their ips and everything they playstation just have the best ips in general uh you know best you know back catalog of games when it comes to their older stuff on behalf of everybody at savage game studios uh thank you for having us we can't wait to show you what we've been working on all right and down at the bottom here this is very very important because this is where herman holtz really kind of dig in and I need everybody to take a look at this because every PlayStation fan, every diehard fan needs to understand this so that I'm guessing Herman throw this in there so that we don't get mad or people don't get upset like, oh, why are they buying a mobile studio? I mean, are they pulling away from single player stuff? This is very, very important. So as we assured you before with our plans to bring select titles to PC, our efforts beyond console in no way diminish our commitment to the PlayStation community, nor our passion to keep making amazing single player narrative driven experiences. It's been a tremendous year for games on PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 4 with huge uh, releases, including Horizon Forbidden West, Gran Turismo 7, MLB The Show 22, and on November 9th, the highly anticipated God of War Ragnarok. Now, also on top of that, PlayStation VR 2 is also on the horizon and promises a huge leap forward in presence and immersion, bolstered by a best-in-class software like Horizon Call of the Mountain, we are proud of our upcoming releases on PC as well. Uncharted Legacy of Thieves Collection and Marvel's Spider-Man, giving gamers without PlayStation hardware a taste of our amazing library of first-party titles. So again, guys, Herman coming out here basically saying, listen, I know we're expanding in the mobile segment even more. They have the PlayStation Backbone controller. Uh, apparently, they're working on a cloud-based uh, cloud website and stuff like that for you to you know, stream dedicated PlayStation games. I talked about the PC launcher, lots of games going to uh, you know, PC and stuff like that. But they're still staying true to what makes PlayStation great. Besides the fact that they're expanding over into New Horizons, PC, mobile, cloud, all of that stuff. This is really good to know that they're still sticking to the tried and true thing that makes PlayStation great, which is their single player games. They said it before and then now they're saying it again. So I don't see any reason for people to be salty about games going to, you know, PC or anything like that, because like I said before, they're still sticking to their guns as far as, you know, given that grade A awesomeness when it comes to their AAA games day one on PlayStation 5 and then thereafter, then they'll put it on PC. Shouts to my man, Ricardo. Thank you so much for the 200 pesos. I, I think that's Mexican, right? Uh, pesos. So thank you so much, man. It says, hey, dude, love your streams. Keep doing this amazing job. Love you. Love you too, Ricardo, man. Welcome to the channel. I appreciate you. 
Thank you for uh, the 200 pesos. Appreciate the love and the support. Do me a favor, guys. Hit the like button if you are enjoying the show. Tell a friend to tell a friend. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right. So let's go ahead down at the bottom here. Let's wrap this thing up, guys, with this studio acquisition. And so our mobile efforts will be similar additive, uh, providing more ways for more people to engage with our content and striving to reach new audience unfamiliar with PlayStation and our games, Savage Game Studios is joining a newly created PlayStation Studios mobile division. Wow, that's very important to highlight, guys. Joining a newly created PlayStation Studios mobile division, which will operate independently from our... Listen to this. So this new studio that they just bought, which is Savage uh, Studios, right? Which will operate independently. So they're still you know, having their independence just like, you know, Bungie and everything like that. So anyways, Savage Game Studios is joined in a newly created PlayStation Studios mobile division, which will operate independently from our console development and focus on innovative and on the go experiences based on new and existing IP. So this studio is going to be, you know, operating independently, guys, and also expanding when it comes to you know their new ips that they're going to be doing and existing ips uh for mobile so this is very very interesting here man sony is really trying to tap into uh you know the mobile department and obviously they you know this studio must be really good i never heard of this studio before but obviously it must be good for sony to have faith in them to spend x amount of dollars to get them now at the bottom here it says I hope y'all will join me in welcoming Savage Game Studios into the fold and that those of you who enjoy mobile gaming in addition to console or PC uh, will look forward to what they have in store. Now, they are already working on a new unannounced AAA live service again. Like I said, Sony is always going to be strategic when it comes to buying studios. You see down here at the bottom, guys, they are already working on a new unannounced AAA live service action game. Sony is smart, man. Again, guys, we do have to understand what Sony's future is here, right? They're trying to expand in the mobile department. They're trying to expand on PC. They are trying to expand as much as they can to get more and more gamers. So Already, they're working on a new unannounced AAA mobile live service stuff. Live service is a big push for PlayStation right now. They have 10 uh, new live service games that they're, that they're working on, and that's going to be releasing by now until 2026. And so live service, once again, this is the reason, one of the main reasons why, not just to expand in the mobile department, but also to expand in the live service department as well. And so it's too early to reveal more, but I'm so excited for when they will be able to obviously reveal more on this new unannounced AAA mobile game. And it says, wishing you good health and happiness to you and your loved ones. So this was typed up by none other than head of PlayStation Studios, Herman Holtz. So that's very, very interesting there, guys. Again, the main takeaway here is that Sony is trying to expand, you know, into the live service arena even more, into the mobile service arena as well. And also PC continue to do that and staying tried and true to their single player experiences that they're known for. So I don't see anything wrong with this. Obviously, expand PlayStation even more as long as you're keeping the core fan base happy by dropping those he heavy bangers on the PS5 day and date. I think everybody should be fine. Games are going to still happen on PC. Games are coming to mobile. Uh, they're expanding on that arena. So that's completely fine with me. Let me know y'all thoughts on this one. Also, I did uh, pull up the studio itself because I was kind of curious. Never heard of Savage Game Studios. And this is their actual website here. And um, yeah, this is it right here. It's based out in Berlin, Germany. Uh, so it's a German studio and everything. So it seems like Sony literally have, you know, big faith in this particular studio here. It says that we are building great things and we need your talent. So it seems like they're actually hiring and everything. And at the top here, it says that we make action games with epic stories to foster lasting connections with players around the world. Savage Game Studios is a game company built 
by hungry, humble, and empathetic industry professionals. We offer truly uh, a collaborative and highly international working environment that welcomes team players who feel empowered by our vision. And so there it is, guys. This is the new studio uh, that Sony literally picked up on. So let me know y'all thoughts in the comments section there. Uh, and I know, like I said, oh, let me zoom out. I know that... Um, this is not the studio that you guys really want, right? So we need to acquire. I know a lot of people really want to hear something about Square Enix or Capcom or somebody else, right? Other than just this, but we have to accept. And I, I listen, as a diehard PlayStation fan, I have to accept Sony's decisions that they're doing as far as them acquiring studios to expand PlayStation even more. Like, there's nothing we can do about that. We already know that they have 10 live service games. Like, I we don't know how those live service games are going to be. I only thing I can say is that I hope that these live service games are going to be great. But us whining and complaining about the studios, or better yet, even say, oh, don't really care about this. That that's already in motion already. The thing that I don't like is Sony, obviously the price hike. I'm not a fan of that. I think that's unfair to a lot of people around the world that can't get their hands on a PS5 um, to say that you can't rival Game Pass, to say, oh, you can't make your own version of Call of Duty or blocking games and it's not benefiting either you or Microsoft. Those things are crazy to me, right? And obviously Jim Ryan's leadership, yeah, there's some questions there that I do have. But other than that, Sony is going to be Sony and I, I, I really want all of us to be happy when it comes to PlayStation. Like the mobile side of things, I knew that was coming. I knew that they were going to expand in that arena. Obviously, they see what Microsoft is doing. Microsoft is trying to get their games on every screen possible. Sony is trying to follow suit. So this is obviously a different type of Sony. As long as they're not being anti-consumer, you know, with certain decisions that they're making, well... We'll see as time progress, but this is very good to note that they're really sticking to their guns when it comes to, you know, uh, obviously the single player narrative driven games being high quality and everything. So let me know your thoughts in the actual comment section. All right. So let's uh, let's go ahead and move on here to something that is very, very interesting. And this has to do with a new PlayStation 5 uh, model here. And obviously we heard about different ones before. I believe the Horizon Forbidden West one uh, is actually a newer model uh, PS5. But let's dive into this one. So we have a new PlayStation 5 model here, not sort of uh, a slim model or anything like that, which a lot of people were really expecting the PS5 when it comes to uh, this price increase. Like this is around the time you should drop the price or this is around the time you introduce a PlayStation 5 Slim or something like that. I think people would be not so mad, you know, about a, a PS5 Slim or something like that. But better yet, hey, what did they end up doing? Going up on the price, which, I mean, it's just not cool at all. But hey, what are we going to do? They're not going to basically retract on that. So let's move along here. New PlayStation 5 model, CF. I-1200 model, okay? Now, this is actually released in September 15th in Japan, according to real retailer uh, uh, Gecko. So, now, this is uh, interesting here because th there won't be anything significant as far as, like, the look of the PS5. The look of the PS5 is literally going to be the same. But right now, the next uh, revision models of the PS5... Uh, speaking of the CFI uh, 1200 series with a release date of September 15th for Japan. Now, this one right here, September 15th is also the date that the PS5 increase will go in effect in Japan. So that's very important to note because I thought that it was, you know, effective immediately. So apparently the PS5 increase will take effect uh, September 15th. So if you can, if you're in Japan or whatever the case may be, try very hard to get a PS5 before the PS5 increase start hitting. Now, no additional details on the significant new changes or differences 
of the PS5 model uh, are available at this time. But as far as we know, like the previous one, which is the 1100 revision, any changes are expected to be internal uh, with the actual console and exterior design and size will remain the same. So apparently this PS5 is going to be lighter. Uh, so basically the, existen uh, the existence of the PS5 1200 series uh, was first spotted on certification filings of Japan Ministry of Internal Affairs and Communication regarding the new models, radio and wireless communication equipment. So seems like it's going to be improved when it comes to the radio and wireless communication. Uh, the previously current 1100 model series was the first revision of the PS5 and we actually saw changes including an easier stand screw. Obviously people was complaining about the stand screw uh, and everything so they actually uh, fixed that or changed that right. I think they did it like a rubber screw instead of a metal one and reduction in weight due to smaller heat sink. So that was the 1100 series one and it's very likely that the 1200 console series will receive uh, basically internal changes uh, to make the PS5 cheaper or easier to manufacture. So it seems as though that even though the price is kind of crazy when you really sit down and think about it, right? It's like Sony went up on the price for the PS5 because, well, inflation, obviously the parts are obviously more expensive uh, for them to, to, to purchase and to actually make the PS5. But they're coming out with a newer model PS5, which is much more cheaper and easier to easier to manufacture. Uh, make that make sense. I guess, hey, Sony's going to do what they're going to do. My whole thing is this. If you're doing that, then I don't know. I just I just don't get it. But we will see. We'll, we'll obviously really see how this new model, uh, once it hits, I don't know if Sony is going to bundle this with a game or it's just going to be a standalone PS5, uh, but only time will tell, right? But it's very interesting to see that we have this new model PS5. It's a lot more cheaper, uh, you know, obviously because of the internal parts and everything like that, a lot more cheaper and easier to manufacture, but yet still they're going up on the price of the PS5 because of, well, the, the parts are very expensive right now because of inflation and because of everything that's going on. I don't know. It's kind of weird to me, but hey, Sony's going to be Sony. Doesn't matter how much time we scream on top of the mountain and beg them to lower this type of stuff. But hey, we'll see. We'll definitely see how that actually progress. Uh, I says, bro, uh, do you mean if Sony not be anti-consumer, look at uh, the increases of $70 games like last. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Of course. Of course. That that that's that's what I'm saying. Like. People are just not happy with the price of the games, right? Obviously, people are not happy with $70 games and such. But hey, that is a problem because consumers are raising concerns. I don't think every single game is worth $70. Destruction All-Stars, Sony's um, main goal at that point in time was to release that game standalone and charge $70. But they quickly retracted and put that into PlayStation Plus, right? Um, so there is definitely... There's definitely a lot of games that I think should be into PlayStation Plus day one versus like the Last of Us remake. I think that they should have just put that in PlayStation Plus, right? Put that in PlayStation Plus day one and not charge $70 for it. But hey, Sony is going to do what they do, right? Obviously, Returnal, right? A lot of people said that Returnal wasn't worth, you know, $70. They didn't like that type of roguelike Metroid type game. Hey, Vegeta, thank you so much for becoming a member. Do me a favor, go to the community tab where you'll find access to our perks and everything like that. Enjoy your emotes. Welcome to the family. I definitely do appreciate you. Thank you so much. Welcome to Play Has Limits, man. Thank you so much, Vegeta. Welcome. Enjoy your perks in the community tab. All right. So yeah, um, Ratchet and Clank, even though I grew up playing Ratchet and Clank, a lot of people didn't really like Ratchet and Clank. Some people thought Ratchet and Clank wasn't worth $70, but say what you want to say about Ratchet and Clank. I think Ratchet and Clank really showed us what the PS5 can do in terms of power, especially, you know, jumping into different worlds with the Rift and all that type of stuff. I thought that that was really cool. Returnal was a type of game that when I purchased it, I was like, hmm, it took me a little while to actually you know, really see the value in the game and what I was really kind of experiencing. I mean, yes, it was a very hard game and it was not for everybody. But at the same time, hey, this is this is this is the Sony that we're getting right now. I don't think Sony is going to retract 
uh, from us not paying $70. I think we're going to continue to pay $70. Now, we just have to continue to vote with our wallets and speak up when there's an issue. Just like how we were speaking up about the price hike. I think that the price hike was unnecessary. I feel like it's just pure greed considering that, hey, there's different workarounds making a cheaper PS5 model or uh, maybe eating the costs, you know what I mean, of the extra cost that it takes to manufacture and to get all these parts to make the PS5. You know, a lot of people are not in agreement with the whole mobile segment of PlayStation. Uh, they don't want PlayStation to expand. They want PlayStation to stick to console and that is not strong enough for Sony because people are not buying the games. Well, here's the problem with people not buying the games. Well, a lot of times stuff is getting leaked out, right? And also people want a certain type of game and Sony is not really making the, the type of games that they want. So it's like whenever Sony releases something and say, hey, $70, right? It, it's up to you to decide, hey, is this game worth $70? Uh, is PlayStation Plus Premium worth it? Is is uh, PlayStation Plus Extra worth it? You got to decide that as a consumer and, and, and vote with your wallet at the end of the day. Um, but this price increase, man, is literally crazy. I, I'm just not in agreement with that, you know, and I will I'll forever call them out for that one. I feel like just like how the Xbox community literally stand up and and let Microsoft know, like, listen, bro, we got a problem with this. You can't double the price of Xbox Live. You saw how quick Microsoft said, oh, we're sorry. Literally the same day, the Xbox community was like, nope, we're not having it. Do you see the same thing with the PlayStation community? Yeah, like obviously when it comes to Horizon with them saying that we have to pay an upgrade fee, yes, the PlayStation community uh, stand up and, and literally let their voice be heard. And then Sony retracted and said, listen, you know what, man? Um, we're sorry about that. Yes, yes, we're going to honor what we said before, right? Um, but with this price stuff, with this price hike, uh, a lot of people are okay with this. A lot of people, you know, are saying like, I don't understand. Well, Microsoft raised their price in India, blah, 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 right? And y'all didn't have a problem. And people are pulling up other things that's outside of gaming to justify Sony going up on the price. You get what I'm saying, guys? So... It's not a widespread PlayStation fan. Like I said, the higher ups, the high, the bigger journalists, the, the top dogs, you know, of the industry, they're not complaining about this stuff, right? It's the smaller guys like myself that are complaining about this, or a lot of you guys that are complaining about this price hike. Yes, it's not directly affecting us, but it's still wrong. Like two years later, and then now you're going up on the price. Like it's crazy, right? But the higher ups, like I said, they're not complaining about it. They're saying that, oh, yeah, it's justifiable. I understand why Sony is going up on it because of inflation and the parts and blah, blah, blah. So if the higher ups does not care, then Sony is not going to care. You know what I mean? Because you need that juice. You need that bigger platform to complain, you know, to say, hey, Sony, this is a red flag. Like, what are you doing? But obviously we have an analyst came out uh, from Hardy Rollins uh, firm and literally said that, listen, like with this price hike, it's going to have minimal impact on the PlayStation 5 selling very well. So technically Sony don't care because, well, they know that people are going to buy the PlayStation 5. And then you have the PlayStation Defense Force that's going to come out with their pitchforks and say, hey, 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 it's okay. It's okay, Sony. It's okay. We're not going to worry about the rest of the PlayStation fan base complaining or whatever or uh, people that are not PlayStation fans that are throwing their hat into the arena. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're going to come out with our pitchforks and we're going to be like, nope. There's no need for you to complain. So you guys, it's just, I don't know, man. It's just its just a one-sided affair, and I'm always going to speak up. I told you guys, I love Sony. I love their games, and I grew up on Sony. I'm always going to stand up for what's right. Like, I'm not going to sell my soul. I'm not into the fanboy narrative. I'm just a gamer at the end of the day, and I just want what's right for myself. I want what's right for you guys as well as consumers. That is it, man. That is it. All right, so diving into our next story here. Uh, this one here is very, very interesting. And I think that, you know, actually growing up and actually experiencing these type of games, I think is very, very uh, legendary in my eyes. And so diving into it here, we're going to be talking about something that I think is very, very interesting. It's a new mafia game. Right. So apparently this is on the 20 year anniversary, man, literally showing my age on this one. Mafia 20 year anniversary says a all new project is confirmed 
in the works by one of the developers. Uh, and also, let's read this quote. Quote, while it's a few years away and we can't share anything more right now, we're really excited to keep working on this beloved franchise and entertain our players with new stories. So, man, this is very, very interesting, guys. We're going to be getting a new Mafia game. Um, obviously, this is years away. And uh, yeah, this this is good because it's going to be next gen only. And can't wait, can't wait. Big fan of Mafia. I think a lot of you guys are huge fans of the Mafia series as well. And so I'm pretty much excited for this. So let me know y'all thoughts. New project on the way for Mafia in the comment section. All right, let's move on ahead uh, head here with the whole situation when it comes to Discord, right? And so, by the way, my Discord got compromised. <laughs> so I have to make a new Discord. Uh, thanks, thanks a whole lot, you know, for some of these people, man, that is just don't play fair at all. So got to get a new Discord, but that's besides the point here. Let's go ahead and let's dial into this one. Obviously, we heard about Microsoft with the integration for Discord. Now, this is a rumor, though. This is a rumor. So Sony will integrate Discord voice chat. So Discord voice chat into PS5 in the coming months. And so I think that this is really, really good here. It says, when Sony first announced a partnership with Discord, immediately players could see an almost inevitable integration of the app into consoles. Now, now according to Insider, which is very reliable, my man Tom Henderson says that is exactly what's happening with the voice chat said to be integrated into the PS5 system software in the next coming month. So the next PS5 software apparently is going to be having some sort of integration when it comes to Discord. Now, Henderson cites his own sources who claim that the update will come in version 7.00 with a 6.00 software update uh, to the next coming month. All right. So basically, so we'll see. We'll see here. So this update is apparently coming next month. We'll see. Now, he went on further on Twitter to say that he will be more, uh, he will give us like some more of a specific time frame to, you know, on when this is actually happening and everything. Uh, but man, I can't wait. I literally can't wait. I think that, you know, in integrating discord into this one, I think will be very, very good and what have you, but hopefully, hopefully now this is what he said. It says, I'll have more accurate date on this next week basically in addition to a bit of news as we are getting a ps5 price increase uh ps5 price increase that a lot of people is just not happy about right i mean it is what it is at this point okay so diving into our next story here let's talk about amazon and this was a story that i wanted to jump on right away when it was first put out there and ea and man i'm telling you if amazon would have bought ea Oh boy, that would be huge. That would be really, really huge. And um, considering how Madden performs on PlayStation and obviously Xbox, whatever the case may be. But interestingly enough, there was a rumor that was put out there. This was like a couple of days ago. Obviously, that rumor fall flat on its face because it's not happening. So Amazon reportedly set to acquire FIFA publisher Electronic Arts. And so, man, if that would have happened, oh boy, oh boy. So CNBC refuted this story claiming that no such bid is to be made, at least not today. That doesn't mean that something won't happen down the line. However, we'll keep you posted on this one. So Amazon is not going to make a bid uh, for electronic art sources tell CNBC's uh, David Faber uh, literally shares of the obvious EA surge earlier on the report citing a rumor. And so this is very, very interesting because man, if Amazon would have picked that up, boy, oh boy, oh boy, that would have been some news. Cause I was like, what? When I first saw the rumor and this was according to sources at GLHF, uh, that was the actual, um, source of the actual information at first. 
uh, you know, literally saying that, listen, Amazon is trying to gobble them up and, you know, Amazon trying to push the whole movies and TV shows even more, considering that Sony is tapping into that arena with a lot of their games, you know, going into that uh, arena as well. And so they're pro probably thinking about, oh, turning Dead Space into a TV show or turning Mass Effect or Dragon Age into movies and things of that nature. I mean, hey. You see what's happening here. Sony made $400 million off of Uncharted. So we're seeing something for Gran Turismo. We already got something for Last of Us coming out next year. We got Twisted Metal. Ah, oh, man. The list goes on God of War. A uh, Horizon. Like, you know, Sony is trying to make sure that their IPs go into different arena, especially with the mobile side of things and also PC as well. So that's very, very interesting. Clearly, if Amazon would have acquired EA, that would have been a major push, not only just keeping the games where they're at as far as releasing the games and stuff and working with EA Development Studios, but also pushing that whole TV show and movie agenda for their IPs as well. So let me know y'all thoughts in the comment section. Who knows? Maybe it might happen, maybe not. All right, so let's go ahead here and let's dial into our next part of the show, Last of Us. Now, I know some of you guys said, oh, you're not buying the game or anything like that. Some of y'all want to wait until I stream the game, whatever the case may be. Anyways, I thought I would kind of throw this in there for you guys that really, really kind of care about this, right? So let me put something on this one. So basically, if you are interested in this, The Last of Us PS5 uh, sold out of Firefly Edition will restock next week. So if you're interested in picking up the Firefly Edition, which is $100, it's already bad enough. A lot of you guys said that the game is not worth $70 and $100, is it going to be worth $100? Well, if you're a diehard uh, fan of The Last of Us, if you never played the original Last of Us back when it came out on PS3 and also released on PS4, which is the remaster, then hey, I guess you can justify spending $100 on this if you're brand new, you never played the game before. Not only that, it's one of the greatest stories ever told uh, as, as far as you know the story, the characters, the environment. It's one of the greatest games ever made in my eyes. But if you never experienced The Last of Us now is the time uh, to really kind of dial in there. So they're saying that the Firefly Edition, I think it was sold out on the day uh, when Sony first announced, you know, the Firefly Edition and all the editions for pre-orders. It was sold out that, set, that same day. So now they're going to have new stock. Obviously, this is just for U.S. and not for Europe. So if you're in Europe right now, they're saying, hey, just hang tight. Uh, they'll have more information on this one. And then we'll kind of take it from there. Now, basically, uh, they did, you know, talked about Sony will restock and it's actually happening September 2nd at 12 a.m. ET. And this will become a first come first serve type thing. And it's going to be on PlayStation Direct, right? It says that with The Last of Us Part 1 launching, we are pleased to announce that we are having another limited set of Firefly editions available for purchase on 9 to 2022 12 a.m et in the u.s and these will be first come first serve so if you're not quick on the beaver then Boy, obviously you're not gonna you're not gonna get your hands on this one thank you larry k for the one dollar i appreciate you my g thank you so much for showing, uh, showing support for the channel all right let's dive right into this one the dual sense edge the controller that some of you guys don't like how the controller looks some of you guys have mixed bag feelings on it we're going to be buying it for the channel and reviewing it on here for you guys to see what type of value are we getting here for you know how does it stack up to the elite 2 controller all of this type of stuff yada 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 and so uh yeah obviously we're expecting sony uh to really announce a release date and price for this controller. It seems as though that this controller is gonna be coming out uh, really, really soon here, at least in time for God of War Ragnarok, because when the type up was done for this DualSense Edge controller, Sony did talk about basically God of War Ragnarok, their upcoming releases with this controller in mind. So it's literally safe to say that, hey, this is the case. So let's talk about what's gonna be coming in the box for the DualSense Edge controller. Obviously, this type up was done by uh, none other than PlayStation Lifestyle. So shout out to the people over there at PlayStation Lifestyle. Sony reveals what's in the PS5 DualSense Edge controller box. And as you guys can see here, what's in the box, you have the DualSense Edge wireless controller, the USB braided cable, two standard stick caps, 
two high dome stick caps, two low dome stick caps, and two half uh, dome uh, back buttons, and two lever uh, back buttons, and connector housing, and a carrying case. So that's all that's in the actual box here. Typical stuff like the Elite uh, controller and stuff like that from Xbox. Uh, that's what you you know expect that it's going to come with all these uh, pieces and stuff like that for the actual controller. Again, still no price or anything like that, but we can only assume that it's probably going to be 180 either 180 to $200. All right, so we're back on the main screen here. Uh, so let me know your thoughts. Will you be picking up the DualSense Edge controller? Uh, I know some of you guys have mixed feelings about the controller. Some of y'all saying, uh, I just want to wait a little bit. I don't really want a pro controller. Uh, they should make you know, uh, something actually different rather than just giving us that, right? Which I completely understand that. And I think uh, we'll see what actually happens. So let me know your thoughts in the actual comment section. All right. So we're going to be moving towards uh, Q&A. So if you guys have any questions, any concerns or anything like that, feel free uh, to come fire off away in the comment section with any questions that you may have. Also, if you're brand into the channel, click that subscribe button, turn on that post notification bell and yeah, let's get on with it, man. Let's get on with the Q and a tag me. If you want to super chat, whatever, all of that is actually welcome. All right. So let's see here what we have here. Thank you guys so much for the support Q and a time. If you have any questions, pertaining to Sony buying Savage Studios or this new PS5 remodel. Literally, it's going to just be, you know, just a lighter PS5. Uh, the internals, the heatsink is probably going to be, you know, lighter, uh, a much more smaller, whatever. Uh, so we're going to see how that actually going to, you know, pan out once, you know, they start pushing it to the U.S. Uh, Discord rumor all that good stuff. Any questions, guys? Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your thoughts. Happy Monday to you guys, man. Appreciate the love and the support. All right. All right. Let me uh, make sure you guys hit the like button, man. I appreciate you guys. Hit the like button for your boy. Hit the share button as well. Let's have a discussion, guys. I appreciate y'all. Let me go ahead and um, make sure uh, that this is um, set up for you guys. Okay. All right. Let's go back to the the main hub here and let's take some of these questions all right q a time q a time make sure you guys hit the like button if you did enjoy the show okay it says have you been working on a video game behind the scenes ha <laughs> ha man if, even if i was working on a video game i couldn't even tell you i couldn't even go into thought of uh thoughts of even telling you that right now but um yeah let's just say that's always been a dream and a goal of mine. And um, the sky is definitely the limit on, you know, what's what's there for your boy. Uh, I says, uh, what studio uh, they bought? They bought a mobile studio, Savage Game Studios. Uh, you know, it's a mobile studio. They're working on a AAA unannounced mobile game. And this is a way for Sony to expand uh, themselves in the mobile department and everything. So there you go. Uh, uh, OCD Gamer says, great show, Marlon. Thank you so much. Uh, large man, thank you so much for the support. Make sure you guys hit the like button if you did enjoy the show. Andre B says, what's up, bro? Uh, good show as always. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. Any more questions? Any more questions for your boy? Um, let's see here. Let's see. More questions. More questions. Tag me at Marlon Gaming Nation. Super chats are welcome because it does help our channel out. So I appreciate you guys. Or if you want to become a member as well, that definitely does help us to keep the lights on and to keep pushing. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Uh, let's see here. It says, what kind of games would uh, would you like to create? What kind of games I would like to create would be, you know, adventure games, action adventure games. I did have a concept for a game that I think would 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 be extraordinary. Uh, I'm not going to really say out in public like what the concept is, but just know that it's kind of similar in the vein of Uncharted and stuff. But I like to tell stories that are just life changing stories that can benefit someone in a very special way on how you get into one situation and how you literally get out of it and how you can inspire others um, by going through that actual journey. And so I think action adventure uh, is definitely a genre that if I'm making games, it would be in that genre, it would be in that space and basically use up all the resources and abilities that I do have to 
you know, basically write a, a solid story and giving the player a lot of options in the world, not just this uh, sort of uh, tunnel vision experience where you're going from corridor to corridor or you're going from cover to cover, but also allow the player to expand um, into the world, like go into the world, maybe go into the store, uh, interact with you know, an NPC, uh, do s jobs or, you know, just kind of giving the, just giving the player a sense of real life, right? Uh, not so much on the magical fantasy type of stuff, but just keeping it real and keeping it boots on the ground as far as um, the ability to sort of like traverse in the world, realistically speaking, and um, just offer the player as much option as possible. Because if you can keep the player's mind um, you know, engaged on the actual single player portion of the game or whatever story that you're actually telling, but also giving the player opportunities to expand into the world and not let them put the controller down. That is my, <clears throat> that is my thing that once I do get into game development again is offering something that I would love for myself and what I think a lot of people would love, right? It's not just to be a one and done type of experience like, oh, this game looks great. The controls are great. The sound is great. The graphics is great. The story is great. The gameplay is great. But what else could I add on top of it? Like what other cherry on top that I could add on to the experience uh, and to give the gamer something memorable, to give the gamer something to look forward to uh, in the future here. And so I think that's kind of like where my mindset is when it comes to game development and what I kind of want to see. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> Sony bought Savage Studios. It's a mobile, it's a mobile studio. Why, why Ubisoft uh, Plus not coming to, on Xbox? Um... <clears throat> There was a rumor, uh, I think that was coming from, I think, Jeff Grubb on that one. Don't quote me on that one, saying that that was the case. But it seemed like they're just partnering up with, you know, a select amount of games, just like with what Sony is doing. Um, so I don't really know the reason why. Maybe they might have a, you know, a deal in motion or something. But, I mean, we'll see. Um <clears throat> Whew. Okay, let's see here. Let's get back to some of these questions. I was talking about the type of games I want to create, and obviously, we have a lot of questions here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, da, 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 da. Desert says, what if Final Fantasy 16 and Final Fantasy 7 Remake come day and day to PC and Steam? That would be huge. That would be huge because that would be more opportunity for Sony to make even more money and sort of expand more, considering that it's day and date on consoles. But I think Sony will eventually go day and date but they're trying to wait it off a little bit because obviously, well, they need you to buy the console. Like Sony, I think, is going to try to stretch as long as they possibly can to keep you buying their console as much as possible because that's literally their bread and butter to sell consoles. What's up? What's up, TJ Robinson? Appreciate you. It says, will there be price hikes in PlayStation 6, 7, and 8? I mean, for sure. I, I, I could see that happening. I mean, if we... If we still go through what we're going, I think after a while, the pandemic is probably going to phase out by those consoles. So I don't think they have a justified reason to go up on those consoles, but only time will tell. It's kind of too early to tell, uh, but we'll see. All right, let's see here. Let's see here. The first month, 2023, will be awesome, delivering us March Hogwarts Legacy, Dead Island 2, Redfall, Starfield, Forza Motorsport, and more. Uh, Rohan says, yeah, I see where you're going, Marlon, because most companies don't do that. Uh, which would be great. Yes, facts. Um, Large Man says, do you feel gaming is uh, uh, exciting this generation? I think gaming in, gaming right now is not so much exciting, obviously because of all the delays and certain games come out. They don't live up to the hype. They don't live up to the quality that we're expecting. So I think once the bigger stuff start coming out, like Spider-Man 2, Starfield, um, Wolverine, even with God of War, I think it will be more and more exciting. I think once the bigger titles start dropping and a lot of gamers are literally excited and stuff like that based on the experiences that they're actually having. So that's 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 kind of like where I'm at with that. It says, are you going to buy The Last of Us? Yes, I will be picking it up for the channel and I will be doing a day one live stream on it. Day one review live stream. Um, I'm planning on getting back into uh, video reviews, but obviously it's kind of hard to do a video review when you, you, you get the game at launch, right? So it would obviously take me a couple days, maybe three days to kind of do a video review. And that's if you guys want me to do a video review. If not, we'll do the live 
uh, live review type of experience where I play the game live and I'll tell you guys if it's worth your hard earned dollar or not. Uh, let's see here. Um, it says if Final Fantasy 16 release on PC, majority of people would not buy a PS5. That is the truth. That is the truth. Only if they're a console gamer. If they're a console gamer, then, you know, obviously they will buy. Like, like I said, there's a market for certain gamers, right? There's a market for the console gamer. There's a market for the in-between gamer that, you know, will prefer a PC. But because it's day and date on PS5, they'll stick to the PS5, you know? Um, but yeah, that would make a big difference. If Sony said day and date, uh, Final Fantasy 16, but they're not. They're trying to sell as much PS5s as possible, so... That's really kind of like where they're at. Um, let's see here. Let's see here. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Uh, it says, when is GTA 6? They say, I think they're saying 2026, 2026 for GTA 6 at this point. So again, we'll see what actually happens. But 2026 is what we're looking down the barrel of at this point uh, for that. So we'll see. We'll definitely see. Uh, it says, what studio Sony bought? They bought Savage Game Studios. It's a mobile uh, studio. They're working on an actual unannounced AAA game as well. Uh, let's see here. They're trying to expand in the mobile department, basically. Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. Any more questions? It says, I'm calling it now. Xbox will blow, a, uh, blow us mine at E3 2023 with xbox game pass friends and family and ubisoft plus indiana jones uh oh, man I, I hope so i really hope so because a lot of xboxes uh their 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 showcases are normally kind of underwhelming to say the least but hey you know we'll see we'll definitely see imagine a hellboy game built with unreal engine 5 Ooh boy that would be crazy right i think anything that's built with unreal engine 5 that's built very well. I think will blow people away in general. Um, so yeah, for sure on that one. I, what I really want to do today, I want to play some Last of Us Remastered uh, for you guys. Uh, I want to play that on Twitch today. I know I've been busy with the channel and stuff like that, but I really want to um, play play on Twitch today for sure um, for you guys. Let's see here. Let's see here. And the crazy part is, man, a lot of people out on Twitter, because of this price hike, want Jim Ryan to be removed from PlayStation. Like, And I say this because, well, a lot of the decisions is not just on Jim Ryan. It's obviously, what's his name? Can, 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 he, what's his name again? Uh, let me click on his name. What's his name? Kenshiro Yoshida. Yeah, Kenshiro Yoshida. That's, I mean, he's the head of PlayStation or not PlayStation, but Sony. So I think a lot of decisions is is above Jim Ryan's head, but also a lot also half of the decision is on is on Jim Ryan as well. And man, I don't know. I don't think people are just happy with Jim Ryan in general, but hey, you know, I, I'm not happy with a lot of the decisions that Jim Ryan is making and how old school he is and how he's running PlayStation, but you know, we'll see, man. We'll see what act, what actually happens. Is I hope Square Enix uh, make the right choice and don't let Sony trick into console exclusive uh, because of they release Final Fantasy 16 on PC would definitely make more money for sure. But I think it's money, man. It's money talks at the end of the day. Sony goes to them first and say, hey, listen, we're paying you X amount of millions of dollars to make it tied to our to our console. You know what I mean? And so money talks at the end of the day, man. Money talks, man. These companies are in business to make money. So, oh, drop a link. Oh, okay. Okay. I got you. I got you. It's Marlin Gaming Nation for my Twitch. So if you guys want to see me play The Last of Us Remaster, uh, I'm, I will be playing um, The Last of Us Remaster for you guys. So yeah, if you want to see that today. Oh, thank you, Ray. Thank you. Yeah. Follow me out on Twitch, man. And everything. If you do have Amazon Prime as well, that definitely does help out if you want to sub or whatever. Appreciate you guys, man. Uh, my man says, Marlon, any upcoming sales on games on Xbox like Elden Ring? Sales? Uh, I don't know. I, I, mm, sales wise, I don't know if there's any sales. I did hear something about Elden Ring is supposed to be available via Xbox um, Cloud Gaming or something like that. And that will be crazy, right? Considering the impact that uh, I think, you know, Elden Ring got on a lot of people, you know, it being just a, a, a great game in general, you know. <laughs> um, 
He says, you hype for the next Mafia game? Glad you like uh, my tweet. Yes, yes, I am. I am excited, man. I grew up playing Mafia. Uh, shout outs to 2K. They hooked me up with... Um, uh, they hooked me up with Ma Mafia 3, and I did a review on that game. And, um, yeah, there were some other games as well. Uh, all the Mafia games, the remake, uh, Mafia 2, all of that stuff, man. Machiavelli, what's good? What's good? Hey, TJ, I appreciate you, my G. It says, bet, because I always want to go to see it. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. King Mo, what up, man? Appreciate the love. It says, what Sony do this time? Uh, let's see here says uh, Marlon what games would you like to see put on PlayStation Plus premium to bring more value to the service um obviously just a lot of their you know valuable IPs that we come to know and love like I would love to see Onimusha I would love to see you know Metal Gear and I would love to see games like Parasite Eve and man there's so many games that I could sit here and say that I would love to really see that them add uh, to the actual service and you know there that and, and not only just that but ps3 there's a lot of ps like heavenly sword and dark sector and uh there's so many games man so many games that i think that they could really add to kind of make the service a lot more valuable not only that just make you make you make you be able to just download ps3 games instead of streaming games because you know, when you're streaming stuff over the internet, man, it's just not that good. Like, especially if your internet connection is just like not that great, right? Um, but there's, I think there's a lot of classic games that they could add. Um, and, you know, that would kind of shoot up the value and then start adding a consistent amount of good, you know, PS2 games or PS1 games that people, you know, come to know and love back in the day. I think that would definitely increase the value and stuff. Uh, like I said, Metal Gear Solid 3, Metal Gear Solid 2, Metal Gear Solid 1. And it's so many games, man. So many games, Sony. It's just I it's just crazy to me. It's it's really Shinobi and uh, I could I could go on and on and on and on about a game. Zone of the Enders and oh god, it's so many games. So many games. So many, the suffering, um uh Manhunt. Uh, man, so many games, guys. But you know, we'll see what they end up doing, man. It's just wishful thinking, right? Wishful thinking, man. Ah, uh, he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I play Xbox games on Twitch for sure, for sure. Play Xbox games on Twitch. Uh, it says, Marlon, is there an AMD event tomorrow? AMD. I know Nvidia has something coming up. AMD. Hmm. Uh, Oscar says the stream is looking crispy. Thank you so much. We're streaming at 1440p, and we're using the Sony ZV1 camera. And let me tell you something, man. It, my streams wasn't always this crispy and great. Like I started out streaming at 720p uh, for sure. Stream wasn't look like looking fuzzy. I have been spotty internet connections, things of that nature. And so here we are, you know, like it's, it wasn't always like this, man. But as time progressed, you know, investing in the channel and getting better equipment and better mic. This mic has been very, very good for me. This Shure mic right here. Um, very, very good. Uh, does a great job blocking out sound and stuff. It's a great, it's a great microphone. I think I'm happy with the setup that I, that I have here for you guys. Uh, Activision is like my childhood. They have so many games in their back catalog that I used to play, uh, which could get a remaster and a prequel that would sell like crazy for sure. And it's going to be interesting to see how Xbox kind of treat those back catalog of games and such. So yeah, 1440p is awesome, man. Not only it's the sweet spot for a lot of people in the gaming community, as far as PC, the PC side of thing goes, but yeah, we'll see. Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. It says, do you have any update on Sony showcase? Uh, basically we're hearing the latest rumor, uh, that supposedly claimed allegedly is September the 8th. So that's literally a day before, uh, Disney with their D 23 and everything. Uh, so basically that's what we're actually hearing right now is that September 8th is when Sony is allegedly going to be doing a PS5 showcase. So that's what we're having right now. Uh, time for Twitch would be probably in another hour or so. Mike sounds great. Thank you so much, man. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Mick Sean says, so Marlon, I'm on vacation in North Carolina. I went to GameStop out there and asked them if they had any PS5. And they said they had the digital versions, but they sold out in less than an hour. See what I'm telling you? Like, 
Sony knows this, man. Sony knows this, that when it comes to the PlayStation brand, there's a huge brand loyalty. There's a huge... Thank y'all for the follow. Thank y'all for the follow, man. There's a huge brand loyalty when it comes to the PlayStation 5. And they know that people are going to buy the PS5, regardless of the negativity, you know, of them being in the news uh, as of late, regardless of the price hike and regardless of the decisions that they're making, they know that their core hardcore fan base, the PlayStation Defense Force, they're going to be the ones protecting Sony, you know, regardless if they do something wrong. I think Sony will respect you more as a gamer to call them out and say, hey, you know what? This is this is not OK. Or, hey, you know what? Great job, Sony. Pat on the back. This is OK. You know, like these companies want you to give them solid feedback, but some people are just white knighting for them. It's just not a good look. It's just, it doesn't help the situation considering that majority of the fan base is complaining about the decisions and everything. And so Sony knows that their, their PS5 is going to sell regardless of the negativity, regardless of what's going on. Like, so, you know, when you have that much confidence, then it just, it just helps. Like it just really, really helps. Uh, Sony to propel themselves and continue to, to push and do what they're doing. Um, Popeye says, great show as always, my man. Thank you so much, man. Make sure you guys hit the like button and the share button for your boy. If you did enjoy the show, hit the subscribe button if you're brand new to the channel. My man Ar uh, says, uh, who did Sony acquire? They have acquired a mobile studio called Savage Game Studios. They're working on a AAA unannounced uh, game right now for Sony and they're going to be still working with PlayStation first party studios as well and Sony said that they're going to stick to what they said before when it comes to their single player uh, driven games so they're trying to expand PlayStation more often to mobile and also you know continue to drop select games into PC as well so that's literally what they're saying here that they're going to be doing mm. all right let's see here uh, make sure I'm getting to everybody. I don't want to leave anybody out. It says the rumor shared by Twitter without uh, source is that um, FH6 will be the last FM set in Japan. Mm, really? Oh, uh, Google Eyes says, funny you mentioned uh, stream quality. I've gone back uh, to the days of you early streaming. Yeah, big difference for sure. Definitely big difference, man. We graduated from from the low quality streams and everything but you know here we are we're doing the best that we can for you guys and everything and i appreciate you guys man i really really do so thank you all for the tremendous support man make sure you guys hit the like button hit the share button you know what i mean i thank you guys every single day man for <clears throat> for all that you do for all the super chats for all the likes and the shares and the subscribing and all that i appreciate you guys thank you uh, it says, I didn't even think that Xbox owns Project Gotham. Yeah. Uh, da -da 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 -da. I said, let's see here. Let's see here. Uh, it says, bro, I'm late to this stream. I must have missed. Uh, can you give me an update? Don't worry. I got I got you, man. I got you with timestamps. I got you with timestamps. Yeah, they said that there's a new Mafia game currently in development right now. New Mafia game currently in development. King Mo, the man, the myth, the legend. Appreciate the love and the support, man. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We'll be on Twitch, guys, streaming some Last of Us uh, remaster, getting prepared for the Last of Us remake, all right? So I will be streaming that on the channel for you guys. Have you tested the Sony sound bar? No, I don't even have a sound bar as we speak right now. Uh, Mr. Knight sings, uh, says, I like that mic, by the way. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, man. Uh, definitely. I, I bought this mic like two years ago and it has never failed me. Never failed me. Not one bit. Obviously, there's software updates for it, but I love the quality. I love the richness of the sound and everything and um, never seems to fail. It's a great mic. It's a great mic. I love it. I love it. <laughs> you know, I love it, man. Uh, let's see here. He says, do you think uh, LA Noir deserves a remaster. Uh, LA Noir, I don't know. Didn't they do something recently with L No, no, I think Rockstar said they're doing something with LA Noir again. So I think that's going to be coming. Uh, let's see here. Sylvester N, what a do? What it do? What's up, man? Thank you so much for being a member. Let me see what what's crack a lack in here. Uh, let's see what's crack a lack in here. Um, uh, 
Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. Let's see here. It says this Friday, Marlon streams The Last of Us remake. Whoop! Yes, sir. I will be streaming it this Friday for sure. So stay tuned on that one. We'll be streaming. And it's Crazy Fridays. So we're going to be taking a look at it. I'm going to go ahead and start playing it now. By now, I try to finish it before The Last of Us remake comes out. That's the plan. Try to finish the game before The Last of Us remake comes out. So if you want to see your boy play some Last of Us uh, remaster on the channel, I mean on um, on Twitch, go ahead and follow me out on Twitch, man. Marlin Gaming Nation. Yes, sir. Four more days. Yes. We'll be streaming it on the channel for you guys. So I appreciate you guys, man. Thank y'all for the support. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Will do. Will do. Um, all right, guys. If that's it, make sure you guys hit the like button. Hit the share button. Thank y'all so much for the tremendous support. And I'll see you guys out on Twitch. And like I said before, please have yourself a great afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your day. And thank you guys so much for the support. Don't forget to hit the like button on the way out. Tell a friend to tell a friend about the channel. As we approach 50,000 subscribers, we will be giving away a PlayStation 5 courtesy of my man, Gaming and Reactions, for helping us out with giving away a PS5. Considering that there's a price hike, I really want to help somebody get a PlayStation 5 that don't already have one. And so, yes, once we hit 50,000 subs, we'll be giving away a PS5. So, Spread the word. Tell everybody about the channel. The quicker we get to, you know, 50,000 subs, the better. So I appreciate you guys, man. Thank y'all for the support. I love y'all. Be blessed. Be easy. See y'all on.